Hi guys, welcome back to the layout. I'm David. I uh, just want to start by saying thank you so much to all my subscribers. I've just passed 400 as I'm editing this video and filming this introduction here. Hopefully I'll get this video uploaded tomorrow. I'm just playing a bit of catch up. Uh, you're seeing into the future now. I have completed all the signals. You can see I've been working on a pagoda building down here. Should be the next layout update. Um, so in this video I'm going to be showing you the footage I got from doing the electronic control system for the signals using an Arduino Uno and some digital servos and then hopefully uh, possibly even tomorrow I'll show you actually installing the signals didn't film as much as I wanted when I installed them there should be enough there to make a video from it I do apologise for the lighting at my desk when I'm working on the Arduino um, I'm using my phone torch there just because it wasn't quite bright enough in there for my camera so hopefully you don't mind that too much okay let's get into it okay guys so this part of the video is going to be really uh, sort of the technical side getting into the jargon of how I'm going to design the circuit that controls them now if you're not into this you can just buy off the shelf components um, I think I think there might be a Mega Points one uh, or a Heathcote board that controls servos and has the signal bounce and there's even DCC decoders that are compatible with them but I'm going to be designing my own circuit with the Arduino to save money and get it really really customizable Okay, so if you want to stick around and see how, I, how I'm going to do this, the first part we're going to be prototyping with the Arduino and writing some code for it, and then we'll be expanding that and adding, uh, for starters, this power converter converts 12 volts on the layout to 5 volts, so we can have power going directly to these servos instead of drawing it from the Arduino. And I'm also going to be adding these... Uh, pins so I can have some output output pins for the servos and we're going to put it all in a nice box and make it look really good. Okay so as I said the key ingredient here really is the Arduino. If you're not sure what an Arduino is it's an open source uh, microcontroller board so the whole brains really is this chip here and then surrounding it is just stuff that makes it work. So we've got a USB here for programming and it's power if you want to use it 12 volts power and all this circuitry around here or most of it just converts this 12 volts down to 3 or 5 volts depending on the exact board you've got and then we've got a load of digital inputs and outputs and analog inputs and outputs and power connections here so it might sound like a lot but basically you can turn the digital outputs on and off um, or even use them as inputs sometimes and the same for the analog and you can send all sorts of different signals out um, whether that be PWM or I squared C or whatever type of signal and there's lots of different boards you can add to this for this project I'm going to keep it simple and just use the bare Arduino the only other board I'm adding is as I mentioned this power converter and that will mean I'm powering all the servos directly from the 12 volts converted down to 5 or 6 volts for the uh, servos instead of drawing power from this board which can be a little a little bad for the board if the servos draw too much current okay so the Arduino I'm using here is actually a knockoff well it's not the original Arduino brand as it's open source you'll find millions of versions of these Gen uh, generally they're all very very good um, if, if they look anything like this is just an Arduino Arduino Uno. Now there is the Mega which is a bit longer, it's got much more inputs and outputs and there's the Nano Nano, which is tiny and has very uh, few inputs and outputs. For this project I'm just using the Uno because we, uh, we need six PWM outputs all of which can be provided by this board. What I've done so far is just put in some of these header pins, you can get these on eBay, I paid about two quid for them for a whole pack of these so I've just put those in all of the uh, sockets there so instead of plugging in DuPont pins uh, which easily pull out, I've just plugged in these and we can solder directly to them what I like about this board is it's labelled on the sides here so I'm just going to 
use Arduino's uh, servo tutorial just to get this servo working and write some code for it so we can see it doing the motion I want. Then we'll add in a switch. I'm just using on off switches, toggle switches. Uh, now, technically, I need two, two directions, but I can do that in code. So we've got uh, on or off. So, say this is on, that will send one signal to the Arduino, and off, I'll be able to read that it's off and do something else. So, right, I'm going to crack on with doing this prototyping, and I'll come back when I've got a switch moving that makes the servo do the motion I want. Okay, so I do apologise because the lighting's dodgy in here. But I've got the uh, basic motion I'm after. So we start at stop, goes down to proceed and goes back to stop. The exact position of that can be adjusted. And you can see when it goes down to the proceed position for lower quadrant signals, it's in two steps because I think that is prototypical as the slack is taken up first and then it makes the final move. And that's just on a loop at the moment. That's really simple to achieve. I've just edited the code provided by Arduino for servos. So we'll take a look at that now. We just make a variable position which we can change. We've got our position for stop, our position in the middle there for when it makes the first move, and our position for proceed, or all clear. And then this loop here, it moves halfway, does the rest of the move, waits a bit, and then moves back. It is really, really simple. Um, I'm just going to skip through most of the coding at the moment, as a lot of people either won't understand it or, or won't really bother with it. But I thought I'd include it just to show you the steps I'm taking. OK, I'm going to keep developing this code, and we might even get a switch added in a minute. OK, then, if we look at my computer, we can see my plans for the final circuitry. And I've been working on this for the past week or two. So we've got a big 3D printed box here and it's got the Arduino in. We've got the uh, a place to mount the power board here that converts 12 volts down to 5 or 6 volts for the uh, for this, all the servos. Then you can see I've also added um, so this is a bit of strip board with the pins in mounted on a little 3D printed bracket here and the same on the other side but this has got much more pins because it's for the servos so what that enables me to do is have a lid on the box like so and then we've just got the servo pins on one side and the switch pins on the other notice at the back here I've got a grill for cooling uh, originally this was built into the initial design um, but I have printed it and it, it snapped when I was when I was um, trying to clean up the print. So there's, that's what the print currently looks like. And I'm just printing this extra grill to go in there. And that just allows some airflow to the power board. Don't really need too much airflow. It should be perfectly fine. Um, it's just an Arduino, but might as well include it as I can. And you can see here we've got the USB port for programming and 12 volts port. By the magic of 3D printing, the real box is just here. This is an ABS, which is a material I really don't like printing in. It's the first proper thing I printed in ABS, <laughs> but I accidentally bought it instead of PLA. So, with any luck, the Arduino should slot in here. There we are. You see the power ports come through perfectly. We're lining up with all the little studs there for the screws. That's really nice. Then if we look at the back, the screws line up to screw in that board there. With any luck, um, the pins also fit in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire all this up off camera, because there's quite a lot to do. And I'll give you a tour of it when it's done. And we can uh, start having to play with the real signals. OK, guys, so we're back out at the layout. It's a few days since I last filmed for this video and we've got the control box here all finalised and finished. So this is what it looks like. If I just zoom in on that. So you can see we've got the Arduino itself in the middle there and then 
the little DC DC converter takes 12 volts from the Arduino plug socket through the converter and kicks out 5 volts which goes straight to these pins here I've put in for the servos so that's just six uh, six sets of three pins and they've got all their plus or minus five volts and then the PWM signal from each of those servo ports just goes to the outputs on the Arduino then along here we've got uh, seven pins so we've got a ground pin at this end and then six pins which go to inputs on the Arduino and yeah that's all the wiring so I can put the cover on that that's all wired and it's got the basic code on now I've written a code so for each uh, of the six signals signal heads there's a switch and then the servo output and when you flick the switch it does the servo motion with a little bit of a bounce etc so what I'm going to do just now um, obviously I can't do anything with the actual servos until I get the signals installed um, and that relies on me doing um, a little bit of more work on the catch points at the moment is what I'm currently working on for that project so what I'm going to do for now is find somewhere to mount this I'm thinking so it's easier to access and program it of leaving it outside the layout um, now if I screw it to the underside underside of the main board somewhere around here um, for one there's already a lot going on under that board with all the point motors but also I wouldn't be able to get to the programming port unless I was in by my workstation so what I'm thinking is it does fit quite nicely here so I could just hide it underneath the uh, little table here and then whenever I want to program it or change it it's easy access because it's right outside at the front of the layout and so I can sit here with a laptop and reprogram the signals so yeah I think I shall screw it up under here and then I'm just going to mount a line of switches along the control panel here um, that will allow me to flick all the signals and I might add some numbers around the uh, around the diagram so we know which signals which okay then so I've drilled a long sort of slit hole along here for the switch wires and we've got quite a large round hole there for all the servo wires and this power wire here I've wired this into the 12 volt bus and it's got a nice right angle connector on it so when I plug it in you can see the boards themselves all turn on nicely you can see they glow there without the uh, torch on and this right angle connector is pretty much flush with the front of this uh, little shelf here so what I'm going to do for now is just double check we can get the lid nicely on there for the semaphore signal control box and now we're going to have a look at wiring up the switches okay so I've got the line of switches in now subconsciously I managed to put the two for the junction signal a bit higher than the rest I'm not sure how that really happened I had intended to put them closer together to show they're a pair but they're also a little bit higher it doesn't really bother me too much so I should probably just leave them like that you can see the line sort of drifts that way at the moment if we look inside then the switches are just completely bare uh, what I'm going to do is string them together so all of the one side will be connected together and that will go to the ground pin uh, on the box I've made and then we've got the six inputs the way these switches actually work is they just ground they connect an input pin on the Arduino to ground and then in the code I can use that to make it do all sorts so all I need to do is just connect all the one side to ground and put six wires on the other ones and then connect them down into the box underneath the uh, control panel make sure there's enough slack obviously to open the panel like that 
and then we can put some dabs of hot glue on and glue the panel down. Okay, so I've got this all wired up now. If you take a look in here, you can see we have each switch has got a colour and that corresponds to the same colour that I've used for the signal wire inside the control uh, box itself. So for example, signal 1 is purple and signal 6 is red. And then we've got this rainbow of colours. We've also got the ground wire here, separate cable. And they just run down through that slot. Then if we look under here, you can see just here all the wires come through from the control panel and then they connect via the header pins here so they're easily disconnectable for troubleshooting they connect to the Arduino that's got all the code on and then I can uh, close up this box and that's all self-contained you can see here hanging down we've got just one servo I've been using this to test all the switches so if I uh, flick flick switch number one, it moves back and forth. My idea for connecting the servos at the moment is to use the last of my ribbon cable and I'm hoping, I've done it before, to take the connectors off the servos, uh, extend the wire and then re-splice each of the servo connectors. So then we can just plug in the servo connectors straight into the side of this control box we've made here. Okay guys, uh, thank you for watching to the end if you have done. Hopefully that was informative and you learnt enough um, if, for anyone who wants to implement Arduino signal control by themselves. There's a lot of resources out there on the internet if you're not sure and there's also a lot of help on the Arduino website itself. Um, as I said, I'm in the future here. I've got the signals installed uh, actually a few days ago. I think I finished them. Um, and I've been having some running sessions. They're all working fine. They're doing exactly what I want to do. Um, for example, just release the platform. And go up there. So hopefully that will be in a video uh, tomorrow or the day after. Hopefully I've got enough footage to show you how I got these installed and working. Okay, bye for now. I'll see you next time.